Let's say that I have five lemons. So that's one, two, three, four, five lemons. And I were to ask you, what do I have to multiply times five to get one? Or in this case, what do I have to multiply times five lemons to get one lemon? And so another question you might ask, because really multiplication and division are two sides of the same coin, is what would I have to divide five by to get to one lemon or yellow circle or whatever I've drawn right over here. Well, if you have five things and if you divide by five, you're going to have five groups of one. So if you divide by five, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five groups. So you could say five divided by five is equal to one. You don't take five things divided into five groups. Each group is going to have one in them. Or you could say five times one fifth is equal to one. And I used the dot for multiplication. I could also say five times one fifth is equal to one. These are all really saying the same thing. Maybe what's kind of in in interesting here, although it's not some huge, some huge learning, it's it's really just another way of writing what you've already probably known, is this idea that if I have a number and I multiply times its multiplicative inverse, and most of the time when people talk about inverses in mathematics, they're talking about the multiplicative inverse, then I'm going to get one. So five times one fifth is equal to one, but that's the same, that's just because five times one fifth is the same thing as five divided by five. If you were to actually multiply this out, if you actually take five times one fifth, this is equal to five over one times one over five. You multiply the numerators, five times one is five. Multiply the denominators, five, one times five is five. So you have five fifths, and five fifths is the exact same thing as one. So if someone were to ask you a question, they said, hey, I have the number 217, and I want to multiply it by something, and I want to get one after multiplying it by that something, well, you'd say, well, look, if I took 217 and I divided by 217, that would get me to 1. And dividing by 217 is the exact same thing as multiplying by 1 over 217. Multiplying by its multiplicative inverse, which is once again a word that is fancier than the actual concept. You're just multiplying by the inverse of this number. Another way to think about it is if I have five things, and if I were to take 1 fifth of those five things, how many things do I have? Well, if I take one fifth of five things, I have exactly one thing right over here. But the general idea is super duper duper simple. If I have some crazy number, 8,345, that's actually not so crazy. Let's make, turn it into something in the millions, and 271. So 8,345,271. 8, and I say, what do I have to multiply that? And I'll use this multiplication symbol right now. What do I have to multiply that by? in order to get one. Well, I just have to multiply by the inverse of this, the multiplicative inverse of this. So one over 8,345,271.